All right, everything should be up and running. That should be working, we just have uh, a little under uh, 40 seconds uh, before um, I'm gonna switch the screens. And then we're going further with Kazira! Yeah, indeed, and then, then we're gonna continue on with Kazira! We just, just gotta mess around with the music real fast, because um, it's too loud on my end and you're behind things and... I just had things set set up um, <laughs> for a different kind of stream. Uh, yeah. uh, I think that'll do, that'll do. And so we are about to go live. Boop. Let's go. Yeah, I, I figured that would be best to, to start off and I also managed to get my grubby hands on some brushes, uh, some chainmail brushes, things that you can easily look up on the internet if you just, you know, stare at Google uh, chainmail brushes and you will find them. I usually go for the free to grab brushes and I'm really appreciative for the people who make those brushes and take the time to do that because I did not, I'll be honest. I did want to, but later on, um, I ended up changing my mind and I had a bunch of other things to do, so I didn't end up doing that. Let's go where we started off and here we are. So I've been really giving um, giving the entire piece uh, some, some thought, uh, some thoughts, multiple. Oh, I see Biama is also there. Welcome, welcome. Indeed. One of um, one of them. It's like there's multiple. It's like I like what I have right over there. It looks kind of like gauze right now. At the moment, it's like I can I can draw silly things and and it'll um. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll go figure. I also wanted to, to, to mess around with the helmet a wee bit more because I am not yet done. It's like if something needs to change, like something needs to... Um, we're keeping a Sele helmet design overall, but I just want it to be more yeah. ominous. So there's a lot of adaptations that I still have to... Yeah, last time we made a small list of things we had to do and the helmet is like number one priority on that one. Yeah, because it's the first thing you see, I mean... Yeah, this brush was made based on a photo, but that is okay. That is more than okay, actually. I think I like this one. Just have to figure out the right size, and then I'm gonna ma manipulate some stuff into. Um... Sanji, I don't know for sure, but Fireman is not. It says that I'm really quiet. I don't know if it means that he doesn't hear at all. Uh, one one moment. Then I'll have to figure out the music settings again. Because last time I was streaming, I wasn't streaming with you, and um, I had my desktop so, yeah, pressed down a bunch. Uh -huh. Maybe it works now, I have no clue. 
Okay, yeah, I'm just... You can hear me, but like very quietly. And maybe this works right over here. Just pushing all the buttons. I bet now. Okay. Uh, how's the sound right now, Bajana? Okay. We will hear it to the chat. Oh, yeah, it's better. Nice. All right, then, then we're gonna keep it that way because um, otherwise you're gonna end up way too loud in my uh, my headset, and then I'll be uh, mm. I'll be out in a jet. I won't be able to do that. I'm sorry. I like you a lot, but <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear me oh, for everything else. Yeah, but I have to be able to think. Usually I have a whole lot more fun with these kind of brushes, but um, I didn't check too much. <laughs> there we go. Like, if I want to make a... Um, I can only press them down like a sponge, and I can't, you know, draw with it. I, I, actually, yeah, I can draw with it, but it won't have the same effect I kind of want to get. And I do not have Photoshop at the moment, and it would be really easy to manipulate everything in Photoshop. And I'm trying to work my way around it in Clip Studio Paint. That's okay, if it looks like um, Gmail, it will ultimately be fine. like I want more um, the chainmail to act like a um, a veil. I think that would be cool as well. How are you doing, Rep One Art? Oh no, are you still there? I think I have to check on a couple of things. Yeah, I think I'm no longer hearing you.
How about now? Why didn't it work? Come on. Yes! I yeah, tried turning I it on that. and off again, and maybe that worked, but I did not mute you for sure, because I do want you on oh, the show. Yeah. <laughs> that would be Yeah, stupid. I don't know where you said it. it was like, okay, and yeah. then... We were talking about that you didn't want to hear me out loud, because you need to concentrate and I'm I, there. I, I think I off. should <laughs> shut up. I mean, there's some smart AI <laughs> behind this engine that'll, um, that'll just mm -hmm. like, okay, we're gonna shut her up! <laughs> like, yeah! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Oh. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and, you know, funny thing is, um, I do not edit any of my videos. Like, I don't have the time for that, I don't want to do it. So, we'll have this little blooper on YouTube. Yep. <laughs> I mean, if things get but... too worse, we can always decide not to post it on YouTube, but... <laughs> no, sound bloopers are the best. <laughs> no, I... It's my, like... The, the episode we did where I was like for half the oh yeah the, the one the way you myself. were muted but I could still hear you so we have a normal conversation ongoing mm -hmm. and then suddenly realize like oh hey oops oops yeah and the other way around happened too like I was muted and, and you were not mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man if and there's any fans out there that are hardcore fans they'll be having a good laugh mm -hmm. like. Oh, I remember that episode, yes! <laughs> I mean, um, because I punched every button in the setting of in languages, uh, profanities, um, like not for kids kind of warnings out there on, on the content that we create, just to be sure, because um, I wouldn't want to piss off any parents. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some words slip up, slip through. Um, but because of that meticulous, you know, nature to get to the whole point, I can actually show you another off piece that I've been working on. Yeah, show. Sure. Wait, a little detail. Uh, let me see, I think. I don't mind the title. But I had many, many attempts and I'll take a bit before it opens. Yeah. Yeah, I've been really playing with the light and the scenery and count and say yes, hello! Oh, welcome to the stream. I didn't see you there, buddy. <laughs> nice. How are you doing? How was your stream last time? No, let's go back to our art tough lady because there are there's some helmet nugging that we need doing. I'm gonna go combine these layers. Yep. Merge. So I'm I'm gonna go brainstorm this this how a, a wee bit um in, in terms of what we have. We're definitely keeping uh, again like mentioned the the salad design in there. Salad. Mm -hmm. Good, also good yeah. to hear that you're just chilling, uh, Count Matthias. Or Count Matthias. It's also another way to pronounce it. Yeah, I'm still very curious about if it's salad or salé. Salé, or... it's, it's, that salé sounds French for some reason. Yeah, and it, it is a German helmet, right? Um, so, no, no, no. I don't think it's a German style. helmet officially. It was used by the Nazis for quite some time. A, a certain uh, shape to it, that's why it's considered like evil helmet and nobody's using it regardless of the design being really, really good. Um, I have no clue where it originated from. I forgot. I did know it, but I forgot. You can look it up, yeah, you have yeah, internet. Yeah, Wikipedia <laughs> has the right answer. Yeah, I, I know does. Wikipedia <laughs> shouldn't be always, as it's always the uh, right no, answer. But not not always, by the way. Don't, don't, don't trust Wikipedia too much. No. Use some of the free thinking. Okay, it said that the salad also cut the salata, salade, or and shallot. Uh, was a combat helmet that represents the basconet in Italy, Western and Northern Europe, and Hungary during the mid 
15th century, when Italy, France, and England used armored helmets was also popular, but in Germany, the salad became the most universal. Okay, but where did it come from? The origin of the salad seems to have been in Italy, where the term salata is first recorded in an inventory of the arms and armor of the Gonzaga family dated to 1407. Okay, so what is the reference of that? Yeah. The reference of that is, I think, a book that's called Oak Shot, and it's on page 109, apparently. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm just gonna read our chat out loud for for a wee bit because this is really funny. Um, Count, Ma um, Count Matthias or Count Matthias uh, responds. I will respond to me, Lord, me, Lord, Your Excellency. He who conquers and just count the count. I think I like that one a lot because yeah, you know you can count. count on us to count a spell. There's a count in mm -hmm. that. Can you count? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm getting too far with my count jokes. <clears throat> But but yeah, I think we, we all count got in the counter spell. Yes, <laughs> counter spellians. Still might need to make some adjustments to our Discord, and there's a whole bunch of things I need to do. Like I I nearly don't have enough time to get my head around all the things that I want to do. Yeah. Oh, I was today. I had like one free day of the week. Yeah. And. I do. It's not enough. I have so many things I still want to do, and like, yeah. oh my god, time is going fast. And then you still want to take some time for yourself because you do have to take time for yourself and relax. So mm -hmm. you want to watch yeah. a series, a movie, a movie, or something like it. But it's like, yeah, can I sit still for this once? <laughs> yeah, and you'll counter the counter oh, spell. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. There are no rules against countering a counter spell, are there? Um, no. Yeah, because yeah. If, if the enemy, if the, like the enemy casts a spell, but then um, uh, one of the party members that will find the foe uh, unleashes counter spell, and then the enemy says, no, I have a nope card for your nope card, so I'm also casting counter spell to counter your counter spell. Um, it, it, you cannot counter, like, the counter spell was on your own spell, but if you have a party, it could be. So, like, if num player num like, enemy number one is casting a spell and party mom number one is countering that spell, then enemy number two can counter that spell, not a number one, because then you are just dropping your first spell and that's the same that, that, that yes you counter the counter spell but you're dropping the first spell that's being countered so, so but not all spells are concentration so it's like no but it's not meaning the concentration but you still need the full six seconds almost to cast the spell and if you are like saying uh, like you're busy with casting the spell and the energy and somebody says nope counter spell that whatever is going on uh, don't do it then you are not if you're you're not finished doing the spell yet so if you're counter the counter spell you're dropping where you're busy from from the first place all right just just making a quick facial here to make it more clear so we have enemy right over here mm -hmm. um yeah just just go by evil wizard Evil W, Gandalf. Um, so it's casting a spell. Gandalf says, "Nope, you're not allowed to." Um, <laughs> but this, this at the same time, he cannot just like sneaky like, "Oh, I'm countering your counter spell." Like, nope. Then you would need another wizard, another evil wizard, like enemy number two, right over here. It's like say e evil tiny wizard say haha -ha, i'll counter your counter and then that works yes but i think that there are literally multiple reasons to read this spell because count matthias how i read his explanation in the chat he will allow it 
but I as a dungeon <laughs> master or not. And yes, we're talking Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, we're talking D&D. <laughs> That's all we do the entire um, stream. And we're also drawing D&D characters. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Scribbling away. <laughs> Ooh, sidetracked. Mm. Distractions are a thing. But yeah, that's that's just I think a um, a thing how you can handle it. But what like I said, it is probably really how the DM sees that in his or her table. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that all depends on all the factors and. Um... Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. Cool. It's like a tricky business. Uh, as for the chat, like here we have by as well, but when then Gandalf has a legendary action to counterspell the counterspell, that counterspell his counterspell, and then it's <laughs> and then it becomes homebrew and it Fuck becomes it. perfectly fine. Yes, that, yeah. that, let's stick to that part will be definitely homebrew because woof, you, I lost count over there. <laughs> okay, good. Lovely layer safe, and I'm gonna erase this. This, you know. Do. Little scribble. Another thing I had in mind. It's like, yes, I know it's a very good design, but I want to bend it. And with bending, I'll tell you. Or I'll show you. It's like, I want it slightly angled. So, I'm gonna grab some of the darker colors right over there. And I figured it would be way more menacing if we had this, you know, uh, chainmail uh, instead of bending around the chin and, and having this very tight fit that we had going on earlier. Mm -hmm. This is so much more scarier. It's like. <gasps> so I'm just gonna go for scary. Yes. Also As welcome to the club uh, Lost Fire Dragon. Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, welcome back. How are you doing? You know I am gonna go sneaky steal some background right over here to get a better impression of the light and shading that I want copy I mean I'm working on it so I can do it Aha. I mean it's not wrong it kind of gives a vibe oh yeah 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 some blending brush right over here Count Matthias also said it's like about what you're talking about with the creepy versus like the hanging what we have. Oh yeah, absolutely. He, he said it's more realistic that is too, so... Heck yeah. And uh, Bayama says protect the neck, what the devil he was doing. Oh yeah, definitely, that's the entire function. Um, along mm -hmm. with um, the backside, I don't want it to be like a, a frying pan, I want it to be something... Scary. Yes. There. Let's add a little bit more of this. Darkness, hello darkness, my friend. <laughs> to have some front um, objects, uh, you know, every drawing kind of has maybe some swords. That would be rapid. Oh yeah, that would be cool. I'm going for swords. Can I do that? Are there yeah. like swords in this ruined, you know, room? I saw some weaponry um, lingering about. There are probably some torture equipment as they are like torturing the old man, at least with stabbing a spear. So, and let me see. There's like dirty water on the ground. And Bucket. No, uh, water. I just want to give a little bit more fat to the room. Just a little, nothing too much. 
I want to bucket go that way. Like, I definitely know what a bucket is and looks like, so I'm just gonna go pretend that I know everything. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just have this wooden bucket in mind that has uh, like these uh, iron clad rings around it, keeping it in place. You know, the old fashioned thing. Made with wood. Who wouldn't? So maybe have some reflection, some water thing going on over here. We can play with that later on. It's just the idea that I want to really right now incorporate. Something. Oh hey, we have something that looks like a barrel bucket. Kind of call this layer rubbish. Um, uh, Lost Fire Dragon to react on your things in the chat. It's good to hear that you are doing fine. I'm doing fine as well. Uh, Sanji, you are as well. Hmm. Mm. Little bit, little bit tired. I, uh, I heard. Oh yeah, absolutely. That um, <laughs> that is a thing. Yeah, lots to do. Lots of things. Lot of things to do. Well, she doesn't live there. She's probably visiting over here in the. Um... A room from the center furnace where the torture is taking place. Yes, this and is the dungeon of cold. It's like this this badass. Um, I just really want to get this fluid done right over here. I'll have to look this one up as well, and then I'll have to draft my own design. But I just really, really love a good crossbow, and I think a crossbow would be so much more badass on her rather than a longbow. And I know we've been mm. talking about a longbow, but it's like, man, if you have that, that wooden, that, that nice, very thick wooden, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. And I think her entire yeah. purpose is like heavy stuff, heavy gear. Yeah, and a replacement of like a crossbow to, like from a longbow to a crossbow is not that hard. I think they can just look up. Yeah, but there is even... plenty of light crossbow, heavy crossbow refs uh, to go by, and mm. I. Again, I need to rest myself because I wouldn't. I, it's just top of my mind, like drawing what I think it looks like. Like, oh, I forgot, but it's the shape. Yeah. Oops, I threw it on the rubbish layer. Wrong layer mistake. There. Next. Uh, you won't be seeing it too much behind her. Maybe if I flip it around, the other shoulder that um doesn't have so much rubbish yet. Maybe we can place it on the ground that you just placed it there for a moment. I'm placing it behind her, even though if you won't see it, it will be there in our minds and hearts, and we'll get back to this. Yes. Crossbow. So maybe a leather band. Crossbows oh, were literally piece. made to counter longbows. Nice, yeah, good information. Know. Thank you, Count Matthias. Mm -hmm. Or the Count. <laughs> I love these kind of like little bits of information. That's good. Yeah, always nice to learn. And now, <laughs> think that glow. What did I do over here? Pretty much. I'm gonna go copy. I'm gonna paste it over here. And I'm gonna go grab the eraser too, because there's some, some stuff that is too much. Put this part right over here. There. Yeah. particular type of brush I use for this. Let me go fetch. Do, 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 do. The background does help a lot by giving the image some extra Oh yeah, absolutely. The background will help um, to get more into the vibe and... I, don't, I think it's really funny to see how, like, we have the same background but for two very different 
ideas. Yeah. Because we showed you the other one. The other one is lovely and cozy, and this one is warmongering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one is ominous, and this one is the opposite. It's like a, a cool winter's night. <laughs> yeah. I think this was... Where's my debris layer? Debris layer. Um... That doesn't matter. I'll get to it. a little bit more to some some more orange light ish okay I'm just letting light come from that direction because we already have the shine going on on that part of the helmet yeah just to top it off so ballistas are your second favorite siege engines though Funny fact, I want to tell about the ballista talk that we had during one of our D&D sessions, uh, Red One Ought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, ballista are amazing, but hard to use by only one. There's like, it's well, big, it's heavy. Yeah, that, um, that's true, but we had an ID. We had a splendid ID. For one of our characters, um, we have, yes. we have like two spellcasters in our party and both of them can cast enlarge and reduce so what if and and that is when um the the, the party member in quest who's able to handle heavy weapons not the spellcaster one of the, the fighters um i believe it was a gif which is putting up yes. the hippo um hippo people also using his i believe barbarian uh, talents to you know enlarge himself then he picks up a ballista as if it's a toy but then he shrinks down again and everything on him shrinks down with him so does the ballista become a pocket ballista oh good question though yes all... you can shove it in a pocket mm. indeed a pocket ballista how nice is that? Like, it could go as tiny as you would make of it to be. Yeah. I have to look up a little bit of the things, but I yeah. think, yeah, could be. Yeah, please, please look that one up. I mean, that's been one of the ideas that we had. The minute we saw that tower with a ballista on it, it's like, ballista, pocket ballista. <laughs> uh, you, you know, parties uh, have uh, crazy ideas, and, and this is one of them. That you're gonna use a ballista as a crossbow, I already knew that. That was very yeah. obvious. Yeah, that's yeah, probably what Deedheart will be doing. One. The party member in quest that will probably be getting a pocket ballista. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me brush some of that stuff right over here. And then I want to go back to it. Boom, boom, all the way up. This one. funny eraser and I'm gonna get off she's standing in the limelight and and you know some of it is not coming through because of her. Okay, it doesn't say anything about items that you pick up. So mm. 
I would say yes? because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> but what I would also say that the moment it gets off detard, so if you would drop it somewhere, it will probably get back at ballista size. Oh, I agree with that. We can do a lot of fun things with that, like toss it into the stomach of a dragon and let it explode from the inside out. For example. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, oh, Deedhard, make sure you get eaten by the dragon and then you drop the ballista, the pocket ballista, and then you will get out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't forget to take the arrow with you. <laughs> oh. Oh, that is an inside job. Here, that's mine. I do love some shiny shoes. Uh, I, I think Biomai is very helpful with this uh, this decision. Yeah? Good. Mm -hmm. Now, for Count Matthias, yeah, it, said, it doesn't say anything about what happened. So, even... Um, L like because rune it's uh, the ability that they are using is rune knight rune knight doesn't say anything what it happens when they like after the minute so yes of course he's not going to stay large so that will be returned too but it doesn't say anything about the equipment that's yeah, going yeah item interaction well. oh so, shit what if you uh, item interact with one of your party members will it be tiny um we can play around with that but no, I don't. I think it's only for equipment because it said anything you're wearing. So you are changing with anything you are wearing. So but technically, you could turn your party member into equipment if you tie them up, and then, yes. it, <laughs> then it becomes but item I think interaction. Let, <laughs> let us limit the the options to misuse it and no, so you know, purchase. You can yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can do equipment, star and items, but let's for now do the no creature part. So. So even when um, holding onto a a, uh, a dragon and then you become like smaller again, like oh, but I restrained you and I tied you up, so now you become pocket dragon, like a pseudo dragon. Yes, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, because otherwise I will. I know what's going to happen in the end fight, and it's like oh, we're gonna bake and we're gonna hug with Tiamat, and then like no, no, Tiamat is a very tiny kitten. Oh, look at her. She's so adorable. Look at that. No, no, no. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm just spamming the IDs that are out there. So, uh, don't mind me. But Pocket Ballista, I would say, yeah, do it. Pocket Ballista is so nice, though. It's like... I see it, though, in the fight as well. As you know, like, you're in the fight. And, oh, we need extra things to hurt. And then Dieter is like, oh, I have a Ballista and place it on the ground. Here, you can fight with us. I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so convenient, like putting it down and then um, when he's gar uh, like Gargantium again or something at least bigger than the Ballista, he can pick it up again as an item interaction and turn it into yeah. a pocket Ballista. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ah, I didn't even hear the Gnome. Oh, hold up. Let me log into sound effects. Yeah, we do have still have some problem with the sound issues. Yep, yeah. sound alerts. Um... I did log in. Come on. There's been sound issues the entire evening. Indeed, Lost Fire Dragon Floating Disc is also a very creative spell. You can use that for. Alright, uh, yeah, sound effects should be working. Okay, so. Can somebody try it out by playing something? Oh yeah, that was definitely the ghost. Uh. <laughs> I, I heard it. Nice. Punk. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, uh, we have a lot of glowy stuff, and we have a background, and we have rubbish, and we have a crossbow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that we already fixed a lot of things on our list, which are were lower. We are... Yeah. But does fix up the image a lot. Uh, it, fix, it fixes um, a whole lot, yes. It does that. I'm gonna make another layer safe before I'm just gonna go smoosh this into one character, though I do prefer to keep the background and rubbish <laughs> in yeah. the background. 
So what I might want to do here is I want I do want to make a, a version with the background um, attached to the character so I can. But I am a little too lazy to cut her out of the background when I need her loose. I'm gonna make a folder. It's only one way to, sl uh, to to slam this one down. Full of fire dragon, yes. But do you know that the moment he is dropping the item, like placing it anywhere, it will return back to three size because that is what says in the at least the enlarge reduce spell. So I will do this. So as long as the is holding it. Onto it, yes, it's getting up to um, three pocket size. Budget three budget. The item you described in the chat. Uh, but yeah, so you still, for Detard, it doesn't matter because it still is a sling size that's going up there uh, because he's getting big as well. Only for the rest around him, it is the size of another item, like the item. Yeah, for the for the rune knight fighter. If you are bigger, will be the, will the mass be the same? I like the, how happy they are. Is that, no, as you are getting bigger and stuff, strength will increase, uh, which says in the rune knight ability and the enlarge ability, you are getting extra damage if you are doing stuff. Um, like and everything stacks because you get the damage from extra damage from your rune. Then you're getting the extra damage from the enlarge, um, which can be cast multiple times on something as long as it's not from the same wizard because it's a concentration spell. So you need multiple sources of it. But yeah, you can make something very, very big if you are working together. Um, the mass will also be bigger. That's definitely in the enlarge spell. I don't know if it's in the root knight. I will check that for a moment. But I think so. Let's see. Rune Knight. Okay, in the ability of Rune Knight, it doesn't set anything about mass. That's specifically only in the... But you're getting bigger, so I assume the mass will definitely change some. Um, the strength really depends on it. I mean, uh, you can you can take Lucy for the sample, uh, which is my character that I'm currently playing. He is a small fey from the Feywild, and I don't think strength is his strongest suit. So his strength is not gonna go all the way up um, when he's reduced or enlarged by the reduce enlarge spell, I believe. No, not specifically your strength. Not, not if you're keeping, you're doing... yeah, if you're sticking to the rules. Like I know there's logic behind things, and I like to implement logic as well. But yeah. Nice. Um, like what's specifically said in the rune knight and the enlarge. Let, let's do the enlarge. We're, we're getting bigger. Uh, both of them say that you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, which is logical because you're getting bigger, so your body mass at all get more tight etc etc uh, the same for but a little bit different like the rune knights get a extra 1d6 damage uh, on a hit by a target once per turn um, while a weapon uh, that being used by the enlarged spell that's getting bigger deals with extra 1d4 What's the difference in this uh, is that for the rune knight it is once on each of your turns the attacks with your weapon or an unarmed strike can deal the extra damage while the enlarged spell is with every attack you are making 
little bit weird that the Rune Knight set is only for once on each of your turns and not every attack. I think that's a little bit strange, but yeah. It's made to be played comfortably and not made to um, adhere to some some extent of logic. So they, uh, with the DD rules, they set it up to have player comfort uh, and DM comfort above logic. Yeah, I, I think they are doing this to make things for easier to to you know play through. Yeah. Uh, I, I think also they did it for balancing because if you're getting like an ability check on and then with all your attacks you're doing extra damage I think they just try to balance that with that especially because you're a fighter you get like in the end like five attacks in one turn if you're a higher level so I think that's the case the damage do does get up later in level so if you're going um, level 10 it's up to 1d8 and I don't know if it's like getting oh yeah and like in level 18 it's up to 1d10 extra damage so while the enlarge stays 1d4 extra so that doesn't change but yeah ah uh, and by my also said yeah it got abused in testing and that's why they changed it oh, oh about the strength stat as well okay Good to know, good to know. And yeah, I understand it getting abused in testing because then you, because it's a short rest feature, you're just saying, oh, we're to short rest. And then after short rest, oh, getting big so that we are like pull a big rock out the opening or like anything else that needs a little bit higher strength. Are you placing the chainmail in different places as well, I see? Yeah, it's like uh, um, nice. I talked about it last time. I also mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, there would be patches over there and here. It's why I left those strokes to lighten things up to make it clear where the patches of chainmail would be. Nice. You're not going to wear chainmail just as a veil. I mean, you wear chainmail everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, if she is... Um, at least Kazira, the, the the character that we've been talking about so much, and imagine her to be quite the um, armor specialist. Yes. And then armor fa fan go. Make mean, these claw marks right over here a little bit more stuck. Scratches. She would. She would be actually. She would be proud of him. So I'm not gonna give her this this spotless armor. I do want her to have some, you know, battle marks. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, and for what Count Medea says in the chat, yes, we don't want people, we want people in nice armor. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm in that corner. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, if you can have decent armor is in... good. Yeah. I mean, imagine her in a dress. No. And then imagine her back into this armor. I mean, yes. Come on. <laughs> This is way better. And there was another trinket over here that I want to bring back. I had to draw the. I'm gonna go fix that pendant a little bit. Well, I have to say we came uh, a far, far um, game from far. I mean, we had a lot of progress going on, and mm -hmm. a lot of things changed uh, along the way. Definitely your biggest project yet. Uh, yeah, she in total, this is our uh, stream number six, so. <laughs> I mean, the last big project that we had was, I think, Teddy Spellbooks, which took three episodes. Yeah, three, three episodes for Teddy Spellbooks. Yeah, but at this point we we can't drop Kazira because probably then she will be standing in front of a door saying that she needs more attention. So yeah, no, I'm I'm afraid I I cannot stop until I'm actually done with Kazira. I mean, she might wake me up in the middle of the night. You didn't finish the job, <laughs> <laughs> coward. <laughs> so yeah, we have to. Yeah, yeah, there's no choice. I absolutely have to. Chainmail brushes up to now. Are you satisfied by them or are you thinking that you still need some improvements? Um, could you repeat that? I didn't quite follow. Oh, you are working now the first time with the chainmail brushes, right? Oh, yeah, just something I quickly downloaded from Google and um, thought it was in Arush. And they were free to use, free to, um, you know, work on personal projects with, royalty free, mm -hmm. so yeah. And they were created no. from what I could tell stock images. Like you um, invert an image and then get rid of all of the white noise or all of the um, you know, all of the black matter in, in that particular photo, and then you select what you want and you create a brush in Photoshop. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and anyhow, these brushes, um, they're quite a workaround. It's not how I imagined them to work. I, I thought they would be like the chain brushes that I had. I didn't expect them to be photo uh, drafted, but they, they do their job, so... If I find uh, anything better, I'll probably switch. Like, this is what I expected, and I ended up with stamps. Like, it's a good stamp, don't get me wrong. But it's, it's not really flexible. And there is some curving that is very much possible with chainmail, because even though these are very tiny interlinked things, they can still, you know, bend and curve a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like wearing a fancy shirt. That's very heavy. <laughs> so, if anyone ever finds really nice chainmail brushes that are um, can be used in this kind of streams without any problems, let us know. We we'll like those. Yeah, I might have to look up how to make them myself. I don't think we're going to be able to, or at least I, I don't think I'm going to be able to find them. Right now, we're just going, I'm just going to go for it. It looks like chainmail and that's okay. I'm not yeah. going to go for pitch perfect here. Five more minutes to go. Geez, the hour flies by. Absolutely. I had just I, I really, really thought that we were just like halfway or somewhere. Like nah. going on. Fine time right. flies. So we have some of the chainmail going on. Come on. It's a big difference if I turn off the background. Oh yeah, but oh, still yeah. the lighting is good. Fabric indeed. I don't know if you have noticed but, or counted, but next week 
is the Monday that I am flying towards my vacation. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that is a thing indeed. And and yeah, do- Dolly noted. <laughs> yes. So for everybody who is mostly watching to our stream together, I won't be there for like the coming three weeks. Yeah, three because I'm flying back on Sun or like Saturday, coming back on Sunday. So yeah, only three times. Uh, three times I will not be there. Um, so very sorry, but I will be back at the 11th of December. Well, that's good. Yeah, just a hat out for anyone. I don't know if you're gonna do anything else on your TTR PGR talk streams time. But I'll have to think about it, and I can think about having vacation time too, or or not. Um, well, t- vacation time. Pooh, <laughs> as if I ever have vacation. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah. It's sad that I just can't take you with me in my suitcase. No, no, it doesn't work like that. It's, um, mm. uh, and to, to be frank, don't worry, just go enjoy yourself. Uh, I will. I'm really excited. So I'll probably hijack one of my family members to go to Austria, um, Australia, uh, or any countries that might involve spiders or one of my bestie friends, um, and drag them along. Because. Uh, I don't think my partner would be enjoying spiders. No? Why no, not? it's a fair I, case I of arachnophobia is kind of preventing um, <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of spiders, I'm not afraid of them, but... I love spiders! Like... Maybe I'm the drove the party. Yeah, maybe you are. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna play a drone mm. next time. I'll, I'll, um, I'll see myself out. Oh! Yeah. If I, I ever, you know, lose a character in this campaign, I'm probably going to come back as a drone. I'm not sure uh, in the current campaign that we're playing is uh, Rise of uh, of Tiamat, for those who wonder. Yeah, actually I'm wondering, uh, I-, I was thinking about playing a drow as well, because uh, you have this um, drow female goddess, I have to think about her name. Oh, the one, the nudist. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the that one, one who I'm... prance around like I'm going naked. I'm going that, that one. Yes, <laughs> I, I think it's so great. I, I mean, oh, it was her on, name look. again. I had to oh, laugh yeah. so hard when I uncovered her story. Like, what woman? She is like the ultimate hippie of hippies out there in Dungeons yeah. and Dragons Elest- universe. Elestria, something like that. Yeah, something. I, I just remember a story. <laughs> yes, she's just really great. <laughs> and indeed, Count Matthias, becoming a trader is the most worst because that means you failed the test. Yeah, of, of Loth. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolute horror. Mm hmm. But yeah, that deity is the, the best. I mean, come on, can you. Come up with any other deity that says like once a month. Let's dance! Oh, <laughs> naked under the full moon. <laughs> <In the rain. laughs> oh, 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 yeah. No. Uh, wait, wait. Girl, glitter, gold. Actually, might might be up to something like it. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean... He does it mostly. See, actually, does it say it because they want them to be free. I mean, I think Carl Glitter Gold is going to do it to have a laugh at the people. Who he's gonna have it. a laugh and he's gonna be a pervert about it. Mm-hmm. He's a trickster, so there, there's that. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Um, so from a distance, it is starting to look mighty fine. I'm gonna draw yes. real quick um, a bit of a line over here to. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. 
Yeah, with the lighting and all the stuff, it's really good. Still not entirely helm satisfied, but I'll get there. Uh, the chainmail yeah. is looking good. Mm -hmm. And there's still parts and bits that still need adjusting for chainmail stuff. Like, um, part right over there. Oh, and Count Matthias, I don't think I've seen it, what you were mentioning in the chat. I Because I have no idea what it is, so I don't think I've seen it. Maybe I do without knowing the name, but I don't know. Fee Fitch. Um, no. And um, no, no, I have not seen that. No clue. I, I don't even know if that's a person or a movie or anime or... I, I'm clueless. Mm-hmm. He says it's a very creepy movie where they do na dance naked in the moonlight. Ah. Ah. That's an interesting reference. <laughs> Considering what we were talking about. Oh, no, no. No, but, um... I, I just searched up really quick. It's actually a movie from 2015 and... Anja Taylor Joy is playing in it, so it's also a very good actress in there. That's, hmm. Interesting. And indeed, it's a, a horror travel movie. not getting a very bad grade because it has for a horror movie it's getting like a seven on EMDB so yeah all right as well but um that doesn't sound wrong no that could be a thing thank you for the uh, recommendation maybe I'm going to watch yes thank you a bunch um and as for the draw character that I might have in mind, it is based on my Skyrim character. So if you guys have seen me play Skyrim throughout, um, maybe the month, maybe a little while longer ago, um, that's the fairy character. I believe the name was Nelfair. I intend on turning into a DD character. Has lovely Thank short you. hair. As for personality, I'm still figuring that one out. Uh, when playing Skyrim, I do intend to have Nalfir become a vampire. It's like, and I aimlessly try to get him that like, being bitten, be uh, scratched up, and that's usually not an issue at all when you play Skyrim. It's like, oh no, a vampire scratched me. Shoot, I'm a vampire now. But for some reason with Nalfir, because I want it, I am not accomplishing it. That's been, hmm. yeah, that's been it irking me the, the entire time. <laughs> Actually, that could be a very funny story, though. Like, all your whole life you wanted to be a vampire, you're trying to get the attention of all the vampires in the world. Like, but... fight me! <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been succeeding until so far, so... No, um, the goal that I had with playing the vampire Dro, um... And that was before I even saw the premiere of Baldur's Gate 3. I had just, I wanted to play a vampire drow. That was the idea. That was the whole setup. And I wanted to play an evil overlord that is also the vampire drow. <laughs> but for some reason, I can't bear it in my heart to be mean to NPCs in, in Skyrim. Like, oh no. Like, some of them maybe, but most of the majority of the NPCs that, that are in Skyrim, I cannot. It's like I start feeling bad for them. Yeah, but they, they are. And, and, and that's how I view D&D characters sometimes too, too, but I am ruthless towards D&D characters. Like, that's I don't know. True. If there is any true. hell because you, you abuse NPCs in any way, and I'm, I'm in it. Because I toss the most horrible uh, NPCs possible to with players to deal with, um, and 
I turn my players evil into evil munchkins. It's like I've turned good players into evil players. I've, made, I've, I've uh, almost succeeded at turning evil players into good players by throwing that's some. That's also a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, that's a very difficult thing to do by giving them the moral choices. Like either a child dies, you have to sacrifice a child, or burn a town. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Blizzard, Blizzard Fox, Nazim, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good old trolley problem. Oh. So, yeah, speaking of which, I'm gonna go hit my save button right over here for today's s session, and maybe there are some people streaming uh, that I know of. Yes, let's I'm see. gonna go quickly check. And uh, right now there are no friends online or playing anything. And uh, so we're going to go end the stream and I'm going to wish you all a happy night.